To allow me to use a Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W on a project board, I often choose to use an external LED rather than that onboard LED. Of course, there are data sheets we should be reading then about the, the LEDs and maths we should be doing to calculate the currents involved and the resistor we should be using. But some quick and dirty hacks will give us an acceptable result nearly every time without all that maths. Hi, I'm John, your concierge of the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. In this easy tutorial video, I'll explain the common types of LED we might find and how to connect them to a Raspberry Pi Pico. Then we'll drive the LED in a flashing pattern from some simple C or C++ code. Please like the video and subscribe for more. I do appreciate it. An LED or light emitting diode comes in a variety of packages. For through hole devices, we see them in everything from size 1.8 mm through 3 mm, 5 mm, 8 mm and 10 mm. Perhaps the most common are 5 mm, which is the majority of the ones you can see here. Then these come in different shapes as well, rounds, squares, rectangles, and they also come in lots of different colours. Reds, greens, blues, whites, violets, and even infrared or ultraviolet. Mainly I use through hole devices, i.e. ones that can actually be pushed through a PCB and soldered on the back, or pushed into a breadboard or prototyping board. But we also get surface mount components, and we've already seen one of those, the onboard LED on the Pico and the Pico W is a surface mount LED. An LED is a diode. It will only allow electricity to flow through it in one direction, the direction of the arrow as shown on the symbol. That goes from the anode, which is generally the positive terminal, to the cathode, which is normally the negative or ground terminal. When electricity flows in this direction, the LED will illuminate. We also get LEDs that have multiple components in one LED. For instance, a red, green and blue LED, where it's got both a red, a green and a blue LED sharing a common cathode or sometimes sharing a common anode uh, within the same package. I could not produce these videos without sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by Cancun, my favourite UK retailer for components. I love the ever-changing special offers of cool components. Cancun has kindly offered a discount of 20% on the first order for you, excluding tools and test equipment. Just quote Dr John EA at checkout to get a 20% discount. So go check out Cancun today. We can get a GPIO pad on a Pico to control an LED by connecting the anode through a resistor to the GPIO line and the cathode to ground. We use the resistor to reduce the current that can go through the LED to protect it and to be drawn through the Pico to also protect it. So when the GPIO line goes high, the LED will turn on. When the GPIO line goes low, the LED will turn off. You can also connect an LED the other way around, where the power is coming from the 3.3 volts directly coming out of the Pico supply through the resistor and into the anode, and then the cathode going into the GPIO line. This means that um, the GPIO going high will actually turn the LED off, and the GPIO line going low will turn it on. We don't use this um, model very often when using the Pico. Certainly I don't in my projects. So what value does this resistor need to be? Well, that depends on your LED. LEDs have a variety of uh, forward voltages and for currents that they will work with before they are damaged. And this table's got some of the common values, but the real value is what it says in the data sheet for your LED. We can calculate the value of the resistor using this approach here, but it's a little bit of a faff 
And to be honest, most of the time it isn't necessary because most of the time you can go and use a standard value. And I tend to use a value between about 75 ohms and 100, 120 ohms, which will give me quite a nice brightness or a very bright LED and will work for the majority of LEDs. Yes, there will be some situations where it won't be a good idea and I might have too high or too low a value, but actually for 99% of the time, it works fine. All of the code that I'm going to talk about today is included on GitHub. It's in a Pico Basics project, which includes several projects actually. And this is the third one that I've placed into that repo. Have a look at some of the previous videos to see how to actually clone that and be able to build those projects. This will build using the standard build process with the Pico SDK. And that's I've summarized on the screen here. It's really to go into the folder 3 ext flash, which is the project we're going to build, to create a folder called build in that and change into that, before, and then to run CMake and Make, or Ninja if you're on Windows. So what we're going to do is connect up our LED so that it is via a 75 ohm resistor into GPIO2. This should mean that that LED is pretty close to maximum brightness. So on my breadboard, this looks something like this, and I'm going to basically drive it to blink it through the program. Now you should be able to see that I've got my resistor coming out of GPIO2, which is the fourth pin down on the Pico, and that's going into the anode of my LED. And then the cathode of that is connected to ground. And I'm picking up ground over from the other side of the uh, Pico just so it's easier to see and show what I'm doing. Do you get the LED the right way round first time? Do you recognize what the LED's anode is? I certainly don't. Um, generally, I try it and see if it works or not. Um, I haven't broken one doing that yet. Um, so my approach is test it. See if it lights with the power going to it. If it does, then I've got it the right way around. Of course, we've talked previously about how to get code onto the Pico and flash it using either boot select or using something like the Raspberry Pi Debug Pro. Um, use whichever approach you are and you can get this flashing code onto your Pico. So in the repo, I've got my project three external flash. And let's just have a look at the main file in this. And you'll see that it looks very, very familiar to what we did when we flashed the onboard LED on the Pico. The only change in fact to that code is this line where we're assigning the LED pin. And we're now telling it that we want to use GPIO2 for that. And that's the only change. Everything else there is exactly what we've done before to flash that LED. And here's the code running and flashing the LED. LEDs are easy to connect up to the Pico and using these rules of thumb, we don't need to normally worry too much. Yes, if you're going to connect a large number of LEDs to run together, then perhaps take a little bit more care. But just for one or two LEDs on a breadboard, this will get you through. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Please do let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button and please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. Goodbye for now.